Hi everybody, it's Miss Cheryl. I am here to do another book reading since we are learning about trees. So since we're going to do a book, we're going to go over our circle time or book time rules. Eyes are watching, ears are listening, voices quiet, our bodies calm. This is how we listen. This is how we listen at book time. At book time. All right, so this week I have a brand new book that a lot of you guys haven't seen before. So I'm going to hold it up a little bit and have you guys look at the cover and think, what would this book be about? What do you notice? I notice that there is some monkeys. So I wonder if the book is going to be about monkeys because I think monkeys would go in a tree. So we're going to find out. So the title, so the title tells us a little bit of what the, the book is going to be about. It's called When the Monkeys Came Back. And then the author, so let's think about what the author does. The author writes the words. So this author is Christine L. Franklin and then illustrated. So the illustrator does, the illustrator draws the pictures. And this one is by a gentleman or a man, boy, Robert Roth. So we're going to read about when the monkeys came back. So that's the cover of the book. So I'm going to open the book. And then here on the title page, it shows us again, when the monkeys came back. So here we go. Let's see what this book's about. When the monkeys came back. This one's going to be a little bit longer. We're going to look at the words. When Donna Marta was a very little girl, the valley was a peaceful place. Children giggled as they chased each other between rows of tall corn. Fathers whistled as they dug in the gardens. Mothers hummed softly as they wrapped black beans and cornmeal and banana leaves to cook. There was one old road in the valley, but, what, but it was an ox cart road, an open place for meeting friends or cousins, a nice place for walking. A sunny place for catching lizards. There weren't any cars at all. The valley was a quiet place, except when the monkeys called. Every morning and every evening, for as long as anyone could remember, the monkeys announced that the changing of night into day, the changing of the day into the night. At dawn, dawn is the morning when the sun comes up, they would howl and bark to one another, and the noise they would make was like thunder in the trees. At dusk, they would hoot and scream, and each leaf and each blade of grass would tremble from the sound. I wonder what that would sound like. It says that it was loud like thunder. Hmm, trying to think about that. Let's see what happens next. One day, a car chugged and sputtered up the old road. After that, more cars came, not many at first, for the road was an ox road, not a car road. So it was really old and probably like with gravel and it was hard to drive on is what I picture in my brain. The sound and smell made her hide behind her mother's skirt because Marta was scared of the cars. More and more cars came and trucks and more noise. Before long, it wasn't safe to walk down the middle of the road to stand and talk, to chase the quick lizards. Still the monkeys shouted from the trees, drowning out all the new noises for a few moments each day, hooting to one another as they always had, waking up in the world in the morning, calling the workers home from the fields at night. You can see over here the illustrator drew the old cars and here's Marcia, she's scared behind her mother. Those cars were too loud. The rains came and went, and Mar Marta's dress grew too short, and one day some men from the city came to Marta's house. They offered her father a lot of money, enough to buy six cows, and a brand new dress for Marta, and asked to cut down some trees on the side of the mountain. Marta's father agreed, and from that day on, the forest began to disappear. So he agreed and told the gentleman, yes, you can buy him. At first it was just a few trees, 
the lumbermen cut down only the biggest trees, the ones with the hanging vines. The monkeys, they didn't seem to mind. They were okay with it. They howled and barked and scolded just as before. But five years later, when there were only 24 trees left in the forest, the monkeys went away. So this is a lumberman. This is somebody who's cutting down the trees. So in five years, all the trees were gone. There's only 24 trees. So I wonder where the monkeys went. Hopefully the book tells us where the monkeys went. I'm curious. I wonder. Marta didn't know where the monkeys went. One night, just as the sun slipped behind the hills, the monkeys shrieked and hooted and they cried louder than ever before. Some said it was because of the full moon. Others said the rainy season was near. But the next morning, the valley was as silent as a stone, so it was very quiet. Over the next several years, the last of the trees was cut down. What had been a forest was now covered with stumps and tangled brush. There were a few birds, but no monkeys. Most people forgot about the monkeys. They had roosters to wake them up in the morning, lamps to work by at night, but Marta, she didn't forget. So those monkeys are gone, and they have roosters to wake them up. Hmm. Let's see if this page tells us where the monkeys went. When she was 15 years old, Marta married. She got married to Emilio. Emilio worked for her father, Marta's father, and when her father died, he left his farm to Marta and Emilio. You have a lot of land now, said Marta one day. I would like to have some of it for myself. Amelia laughed out loud because in those days, woman did not own land. Soon we will have a family to feed. After I plant corn and beans and squash, there will be nothing left over to give you. The rest of the land belongs to the cows. What about the land on the side of the mountain? There are too many stumps for a garden and it is too steep or too high for cows. That's true, agreed Emilio, and thought it went against the custom. He gave the land on the side of the mountain to Marta. So what are you going to do with your land? So he's asking a question, and right up here is a question mark, asked Emilia. I'm going to bring back the forest, said Marta, and that is what she did. So I'm wondering how she's going to put the, get the forest back. What would she need? I notice on this picture she's putting some trees. Let's see what happens next. Oh. Marta planted trees from the foot of the mountain to as far as she could climb. When the sun baked the ground in the dry season, she hauled buckets of water to the trees. When the hard rains washed the little trees from the soil, she gently replanted them. So here she is taking the buckets of water so she can grow trees and then they had too much rain that she had to replant the trees. Year after year, Marta took care of the trees. and the next 15 years, she gave birth to 11 children. That's quite a bit, 11. Each child learned to plant and tend to the trees. Year after year, Marta's children grew tall, and so did the trees. Coffee grows well on a mountain, Amelia would tease. Maybe you could plant coffee on your land. But Marta, she didn't listen. She didn't change her mind. And the forest came back. So now we have a forest. I wonder if anything else is going to come back. Think about what left at the beginning of the book and see if anything else comes back. Her trees... They touched the sky. Thick vines wrapped around their trunks. Birds of every color filled their branches. Now, wherever they dropped their seeds, new trees would grow. The valley was bright with squash and corn and beans, but the side of the mountain was a deep, dark green, forest green. N Dona Marta's work was finished. So her husband did the planting of the corn and the squash and the beans. And she regrew the forest. I'm going to just pause at this picture because I feel like there's a lot of good colors of the birds and the parrots. 
that you guys can really take a look at. So I'm going to show it you guys really close so you guys can look at it really well. Look at how well the illustrator drew all the pictures for us to see. I'm going to go ahead and turn the page and see what happens next. One night, Donna Marta couldn't sleep. As she laid in bed, she listened to the sounds of the insects, the twittering of the night birds. Out her little window, she watched the stars trail across the black sky. She watched the moon shadows shift and change in her room. As dawn approached, so when the sun came up, she heard the roosters begin to crow. And then she heard another sound. I wonder what that sound is. Well, at first it sounded like the barking of the dogs, but soon the barking turned into howling. The howling turned into shrieks. The shriekings turned into shouts. And every leaf and every blade of grass trembled with the sound, so it moved. Donna Marta hobbled to the window and she looked out. Wonder what she saw. The next few sentences right here are gonna tell us. The dark air thundered with a sound of monkeys hooting, howling, screaming from the treetops, waking up the whole world once again. Donna Marta closed her eyes and she smiled a wrinkled smile and listened to the music she had missed for 56 long years. Every morning now, old Donna Martin wakes up to the barking and scolding of the monkeys. Every evening she waits for them to gather in the trees to shriek and howl and say good night. For a few moments each morning and evening, the sound of the monkeys drowns out all the other sounds in the valley. For a few moments or minutes each day, it's as if nothing ever has changed. And look at that. The last picture is a monkey. So when her dad sold the land and took down the forest, the monkeys left. And she missed those sounds, so she regrew the forest. So the monkeys, which is our title, when the monkeys came back. So I hope you guys enjoyed our story. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.